This will be a demonstration of a graver sharpening template made by the Lindsay Engraving and Tools. It's a two piece template with the gauge and you can buy it with or without the stones <clears throat> and it comes with this little arbor is what I'm going to call it for lack of a better term. The stones are made out of diamond on a plate on a piece of wood Come in 260 grit, 600, 1200, and 2000 grit. Of course, starting out on a new graver blank, you would want to start out with the roughest one first and just progress through the grits on all, your, all the uh, grinds that you make. The rougher it is, the faster it will hog off the excess material you don't want in your way. I'm going to talk about what each one does. This template grinds all your clearance angles for your top and your bottom. Start with this one here. This is the bottom of the graver as you're looking at it after you've ground it. The bottom V that you'll be writing on on the table as you'll see in a moment grinds this secondary relief which gets metal out of the way so it doesn't drag when you're cutting and the larger template will put this heel on it it's a parallel heel all the way across this this is your heel and as you can see as I've drawn it here It's parallel on both sides and the same distance as far as width from front of the graver to the, towards the back. When you grind this secondary relief, you grind one side at a time and you do them both the same amount of strokes. That will yield you a, a nice uniform configuration here where both sides meet at the ridge of the graver in the same spot. So that'll ensure that both both sides of the graver are the same width measured from the center line out. These top three flats will grind this part of the graver, your top of your graver. This is your face that this larger template will put on. Only when it's ground, if you don't do this first, it will wind up being a triangle or a diamond shape. Not a triangle. If you can imagine that. What this top relief does is cut down on the length of your face material so that there's less to grind when you go to sharpen. When you break this tip off, and you will, when you resharpen, put a new face and heel on it, there will be less material to get rid of and to have to sharpen and have to polish if you use a a finer grit than 2000 maybe a ruby stone or ceramic with diamond spray whatever you use there will be less work to do and less time doing it these side relief angles get graver mass out of your way so you can see what you're doing it makes the tip smaller and you can grind it as small as you want with these templates Now that you know if they're all four, I'll demonstrate it. This has a little notch in it, this arbor and that is for this pin to locate itself in. It registers it in the same spot every time. You just simply put the nut on the back and there's your first one. You want to start out with a small template. Place your graver in it. I've already sharpened this and I'm just going to go through the motion to show you what, what to do. First thing you want to do 
is loosen just tighten this nut or this thumb screw just enough to snug this up but not too tight so you can take your your uh, whatever ruler uh, you can use the bench anything to push that graver back in there to where it's flush with the end of this gauge what that does is from here to the tip is an inch and a quarter that has to be dead on that way all your gravels will turn out if you sharpen a hundred of them they'll all turn out exactly the same as far as the cutting edge they'll cut the same that's what's so great about this system it's consistent and it's foolproof so you take it and I usually start off with this top flat to get that mass out of the way remember that's this portion I'm going to hog this off on a rough graver but a rough uh, grit stone I cradle this in my fingers and I apply pressure with the side of my thumb the reason I cradle it like this is so I can put a little bit of weight down on this it's imperative that this stay flat if you don't do it that way it'll start rocking on you and you don't want that Place it on there on your stone on a slick surface, either a piece of glass, a piece of Formica countertop, or there's a little piece of plastic, a square that this will set on, and both of them set on it actually. That's uh, that's not Teflon, but it's something really slippery. But you can slide this back and forth on, just like this. And if I do it about this fast, I can start from a blank work through the grits and be done with a graver ready to cut metal in about seven minutes there's your top one now your sides is the ones you want to count there's six on that side six on the other and I check it you just keep checking your graver to make sure Where this comes up the side here, if you're not careful, one will come back to here while the other one's up here. You want them both to be straight across the street from each other, so to speak. Once you've done that, your top is done. Once you've got it as narrow as you want, that's just where you're going to control how wide your graver is going to be. This and your bottom relief angles, which we'll do next. Now you take the V and same way, just cradle it, drag it across there count it. Again, you want to make sure that this comes back the same distance on both sides. That's why you count it and do it evenly on both sides or it will wind up like this and you'll have a lopsided graver. You want it symmetrical as you can make it. So all you got to do is count it and you're in business. Now, there's the shape of the graver, but it won't have a face on it until you take it out of the small template. The graver's still in the arbor, so it hasn't lost its length. The next thing you do is your face. And you grind and grind and grind on that until it is all the way to a point. It'll be flat kind of until you get this ground back far enough to expose the tip that's actually made by grinding the bottom of the graver. The opposite side of this is this. You keep grinding it until it comes to a sharp point. And you're done with your face once you get it up to whatever grit you want for the kind of finish you want in your metal that you're cutting. Last thing is the heels. And I don't put any pressure with my thumb. I just kind of grab this thing to where I can keep this running flat. And I let the weight of this, just a little pressure on here to hold it on the table, not necessarily the stone. 
and I drag it lightly across there twice is what I do on a 2000 grit stone and that will give me the width of heel that I prefer some prefer longer heels it's this here I like them short short meaning this part isn't very wide some people like them a lot wider in this side here. I don't like that much of a heel. But you can do it any way you want. And that's all there is to sharpening the graver. This thing is ready to cut. Just like that. The advantage to using this type of system over any other on the market is that it's simple and it's foolproof. It's repeatability and consistency, and this parallel heel will let you go around really tight radius cuts without dragging. You won't have a little jagged edge behind the graver as you cut. It's inexpensive. You can't tear it up. <laughs> it's just a great little tool, and it's solved a lot of problems that beginners have had sharpening gravers and it's good for experienced people too it's um, the consistency is what I like about it the most I can sharpen a hundred of these and each one of them will cut exactly the same so when I go into my metal if I'm normally going in at this angle to start a cut well the next graver I have if I sharpen it like this on a stone and do it by eyeball, it might cut there. I might have to jack my hand up a little bit to come in steeper or shallower. It's always something slightly different. It's kind of a nuance you just have to get used to if you're sharpening that way. This allows you to come in to the same degree every time and your hand gets used to it. Muscle memory comes in and it's just effortless. So, highly recommend it. Go get you one.